election manifesto of presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna Gotabaya Rajapaksa was un unveiled in Colombo today. The manifesto of Gotabaya Rajapaksa was unveiled at the Nilum Pokhana Theatre today. The manifesto is titled The Ten Principles of Inclusive Governance. The ten principles are national security above all, consistent foreign policy, defeating corruption, flourishing human resources, people-centered economy, technology-integrated society, physical development, sustainable environment development, a reformed constitution responsible for the people, lawful, disciplined, ethical and impartial society. As there is a need for an effective cabinet of ministers, the composition of a practical and realistic future cabinet will be decided upon and suitable MPs who can hold these positions will be appointed. The establishment of a national policy and procurement commission under the president has also been proposed after abolishing the National Economic Council. According to the manifesto, purchase of vehicles for ministers and hiring of office premises for state institutions will be suspended for a period of three years. Kota Bay Rajapaksa's manifesto notes that legal action will be filed against all acts of fraud and corruption, including the central bank treasury bond scam, and measures would be taken to recover the losses and prosecute the wrongdoers. It also states that the Police Financial Crimes Investigation Division will be established legally and no state institutions will be privatized. According to the manifesto, the Central Bank, the People's Bank, the National National Savings Bank, the Ports, Airports, Sri Lankan Airlines, the Ceylon Electricity Board, the Sri Lanka Transport Board and the Railways Department will be handed over to a completely professional administration. Kota Bay Rajapaksa's manifesto also states that a new constitution based on the aspirations of the people will be drafted. The manifesto pledges to probe the April 21st attacks with a fully-fledged independent commission. It adds all bilateral and multilateral agreements signed during the past five years will be reviewed and adds that steps will be taken to release all security forces officials who were remanded as a result of exacting political vengeance. It has also been proposed for the youth to be given the opportunity to purchase a smartphone, a tab or a laptop under an easy payment scheme. Kota Bay Rajapaksa also pressures to restore the pensions that were deprived from state sector employees. The manifesto also proposed the abolishment of the full pricing formula currently in effect. The manifesto also proposes to increase the salaries of estate workers to 1,000 rupees. Kota Bay Rajapaksa states that he will initiate deep diplomatic discussions with China to amend the agreement signed for the Hamantota port. This includes the basic concepts required for us to stand as a sovereign nation to reap the maximum benefit from global trends and build a strong economy. Sri Lanka is a unitary state and we will not allow anyone to divide us. We will not allow any foreign state to influence Sri Lanka which is a sovereign state. We will develop the security mechanism required to protect the country from terrorism, the underworld, drugs and foreign influences. There can be only one law implemented in one country. We will soon introduce a package to reduce the cost of living of the general public. We will make the required investment to provide facilities for all students who pass their advanced level examination to study at a university and obtain a degree. We will do this in the first year in office. We will take steps to extend the current degree program for nurses from three years to four years so that they will get an internationally recognized qualification. We hope to change the current tax regime that does not suit our country and reduce the tax burden on the general public. We will reduce manufacturing sector income tax. We will abolish the economic service charge and withholding taxes. We will reduce VAT to 8%. We will abolish various taxes imposed on religious places of worship. We will remove various complex taxes imposed on vehicles and introduce a simple tax scheme. We will also remove the pay tax imposed on the state sector and private sector employees. We will also take steps to incorporate modern technology at the Excise Department, the Customs and the Inland Revenue Department and provide a solution to the massive disparities in the tax regimes. We hope to create more than one million jobs in the country through the development drive in the next five years. We have decided to provide the fertilizer subsidy for free under our government. 
we will completely ban the re-export of agricultural products. We also hope to completely write off the loans of farmers. We will never ask the general public for oxygen so that we can live off of them. Remember that we always fought to give back the oxygen that was taken from the people. When we said we will sweep away all forms of terrorism, they asked us what sort of a broom we will use for that. Even we didn't believe that we could have done it, but I believe we were able to do it because of the bond that we had with the general public. We do what we say and speak about what we do. We do not have secret agreements. We are not ready to fool any race. We would like to state that this manifesto does not include conditions and influences of any individual. This is a document that does not include any provisions that will bring us under any foreign power. We went home in 2015 after building a safe country. When I left that day, I handed over the responsibility of the children of this country to the current government. But my dear children, this government has not been able to protect you. We have to start from the beginning again. We pledge that we will create a country without fear in the future. I must state that there is an important section of this manifesto that was not mentioned. We have clearly stated that at this election, we also seek the public mandate to call for a general election immediately after the presidential election. <laughs>